All right, so now that we've learned about the image tag and its various attributes, we're actually going to add images into our program. So the first thing we need to note is if we want to add an image into our program, we actually need to save that image into the same folder as the HTML web page that we've created. So right now you don't have the image. What I need you to do is I need you to go to my website, which is misswardecki.weebly.com, then go to your HTML page, go to unit one. And if you scroll down to this particular lesson, which is lesson six, you'll notice that you have an image that you need with the video. So if you click on that, it's either going to download immediately or appear here. You can right click on it, do save image as, and then you wanna make sure you save it right inside the folder with your current project one file. So if I click here on my H drive, I know that this file is contained inside my HTML folder, inside unit one, in class project one, and this is where I know that my project is saved. I know that this is the folder where. So I'm going to save it as studentservices.gif inside of there. So now I've got that picture saved inside the same file as my web page. Now, something to note is if I didn't do that, the image actually wouldn't work inside. So I'm actually going to do something that's a little silly right now just to kind of get this point across. So I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to just right now copy and delete this particular item out. So I can show you what happens when that image actually isn't in there. So what we're going to do next is right after the body tag, we're actually going to put this image first. So I'm going to say, okay, I have image source equals. And notice that my source is where my picture actually is and the actual name of it, since it's supposed to be in the same folder as my HTML folder file, I only need to put the exact name of it because it's right inside that folder. So the source, that's the name of the file I'm trying to access. I'm going to give it a width of 474 pixels, a height that's equal to 128 pixels, and then an alternate text that says student services logo and then I will close off that tag. So again, remember that that image tag has only one singular tag. It just has all the information inside of it because that image is actually a completely separate file. Now here I'm going to save this so far and something kind of key to note also is that you have all your attributes here and then in purple you have their answer. So here's the width attribute with a 474 pixels, height attribute with 128 pixels. So now I'm going to run this code and what you'll see is that nothing appears here. And that's because we didn't actually save the file in there. You saw me delete that picture out of there. So this is what happens when you don't have the file in the same folder as your project. Now, if I come back in here and I paste this picture in, which now it's probably not gonna let me, um, I'm gonna have to re-download again. But if I come in and I paste that picture in, let's see if I can find it, it will then display. So I'm going to come here, go back to misswardecki.weebly.com, HTML, unit one, scroll down to that picture. If I resave that image inside the appropriate folder, so if I resave this in here, now when I go back and I try and run this program in Chrome, you'll see that picture appear. So that's just kind of to reiterate how important it is that that picture is in the exact same folder as the HTML file you would like that picture to be displayed in. If you're going to just use the source tag with a relative link, you need to say, okay, well, studentservices.gif, that's right inside the same folder as project.html or project1.html. You need to be inside of there in order for that picture to actually load. So you can see there that we used various image attributes here and we were able to display that image to our screen. Now if I head back here and see we've added the pictures in, note where your alternate te text should appear and we now added that picture into our program. So if you'd like to take some time, alter some of these. So if I wanted to change my height to be, or my width to be 600 and my height to be 400 and I save that, you'll notice how I can 
change the size of that picture. So you can play around with those. You have a variety of different things you can do with them. You'll notice my alternate text wasn't working because of that plus sign instead of the equal sign. So now if I try and run it again, all well, the image is there. But if that image wasn't there, that alternate text would be showing up here. So you can test that out if you'd like. Try a variety of attributes. It's totally up to you. Now, the next piece we're going to look at is how we can actually alter our background color. And this background color sets the background of the entire web page. Since we're setting the entire body equal to a particular background color, we're actually going to put this attribute inside of the body tag. So because this is something about the whole body of the web page, that's where we're actually going to put this in. Now, the tricky part about this is that you have two options with how you can put a color in here. So the first thing that we can do is we can just write one of the 16 basic colors like blue. So if I write BG color equals blue and I run it in Chrome, you will see that the background is blue. You can see that the background is blue. You can do that and you can change it all around. So now let's say I change it to red. I reload the page. Now the background is red. You can change it to pink. Reload the background. The background is pink. So that's one option that you have for changing your background color. You can just use those general colors. But in the past, I've had some very creative students that really like to get more creative with their colors. So you can see here, I have a whole list of possible colors that you can use. So while you can type in the actual name, what you can also do is you can use what's called the hexadecimal color code. And so depending on the color that you want, you pick the hexadecimal code. So for example, Say I wanted to have this color here, the hashtag 00A5C6. Now if I were to run my code, it would give it that blue color. That's the hexadecimal color code for this pretty blue that I wanted to pick. So you can put your background and change your background just by using the hexadecimal code or by using just the color name that you would like. Now. For this particular project, we're going to use this color here. So I want you to delete out a different color if you tried something different and do hashtag FFFBC6. Save that, run your program, and you should now have this nice light yellow that helps your picture to blend right into the background. So that background of the picture matches the background of our page and it makes it look very, very nice. So here we have a new background color and now you know how to change the background color of any future programs that you may write. So you can see that in there now. Now, next little nugget I wanna throw in here is we can actually change our alignment of our heading and paragraph tags as well. Those text tags, we can actually align to the center and it would make sense for the main heading of our web page to be aligned to the center. So we're going to add this alignment attribute into our code. So we have heading one align and we can pick right, left, or center. So I'm going to pick center. And now if I am to view this in my code, we'll see that my heading is in fact centered. And it doesn't matter how big I make the page, you'll notice that it automatically just resizes to keep that heading in the center, which is kind of nice. I like that piece of it, that as I resize my browser, the heading actually stays right in the center. So the last new tag we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the horizontal rule tag. And this actually has a couple attributes that go along with it. We can use size and we can use no shade. So we're going to add in a horizontal rule right into our code. We're going to type it right after our image tag. So essentially after our image, what we're going to do is we're going to draw that horizontal line right across the screen. And you'll notice that this, like the break tag and like the image tag, is just a singular tag. It's not something that needs to open and close. It's just something that needs to exist once. So we're going to come in here, enter in our horizontal rule, can run our code, and now you can see that that appears right here. So we have that horizontal rule right in our code, and we can add those wherever we see fit.